Hi guys! I know it's kind of been a while since I've done a video and I apologize for that. I've been kind of testing out some new video editing software and stuff. Um, but I promise that I will try to be more consistent with the videos that I have coming out. Um, so I did happen to get a couple questions about how I go about finishing my pottery. Um, I do have one video that I will link in the description below um, about how I've done the twisted line collection, how I went about glazing them and stuff, kind of like the whole process from beginning to end. Um, so that'll be an awesome video to check out if you're interested. Um, and then also, one of my absolute favorite ways to decorate my pottery is um, with a technique called Scraffito. So that is what I'm going to be showing you today in a video. Oh, and I also brought my hair tie because I don't know if you guys have seen my stories, but the last couple of times I have forgotten to bring anything to put my hair up with. And, uh, you know, there have been kind of little funny uh, stories about uh, my escapades with how I get my hair up when I don't have a hair tie in the pottery studio. But anyways, I did bring a hair tie today, so I will be able to put my hair up the proper way. <laughs> So I threw this plate yesterday and because it's kind of a smaller piece um, and it's on uh, my smaller wooden mat so it dried pretty fast. So we're going to get ready to trim it and then I'll show you how I do my Scraffito decorating process. with underglazes. Um, this plate right here, I threw it yesterday because um, it's so small it dried up a bit faster than the other things so it's ready to trim today. And I'm going to be using this black underglaze and this pink underglaze uh, called Rose and they are both from Speedball underglazes and I feel like they're the best underglazes that I've used for the price. Um, and I don't get a lot of kind of cha color changes or issues with my glazes when I put them over the top of these underglazes. Um, and then I also have a 3-4 brush over here, this black one right here, and I have a 0-20 brush, I believe it is, 20-0, sorry, a 20-0 brush. Um, as you can see, it's very, very tiny. And that's what I use for the pink and my little cherry blossoms. And here, we'll do a close up on, yeah, three, four brush. And then this is my carving tool. Um, it's kind of hard to see because of the gold uh, and it's wearing off. But it's a Kemper carving tool. Um, it's got two ends. It's got a fat, thicker end and a smaller, thinner end. Um, I use this one the most uh, for my mugs and my tea holders and things like that. Um, I mostly use this one for my bigger, bigger carving things, um, like my raku plates and stuff. So those are all the ingredients that I use for. Oh, and I have some water over here in this corner. Um, just to you know uh, if I need to blend something or clean something off. Okay, so I hit record but my phone ran out of storage so I didn't get the full video. Anyways, um, what I did was I took my bigger brush and my underglaze, black underglaze, um, I put one coat on, um, let it 
dry until it wasn't it didn't have a sheen to it anymore and then put another coat on and I do about two coats I don't water my underglaze uh, like I said I don't water down my underglazes or anything I use the pretty much out of the bottle color after it's been shaken and right now I'm just letting it dry so it doesn't have that kind of sheen when I go to carve it um, otherwise you won't get as crisp a line sometimes you'll get color blurring or um, your carving just doesn't turn out as well so it's best to wait till it's completely dry and then start carving. Okay, so next I'm going to take this tool right here. It's a Kemper carving tool. Um, I'm going to be using this end pretty much solely here. We'll see if the camera can focus on it. Nope, not going. There we go. Um, so I'm using this Kemper tool. I'm going to be using this end pretty much only. Um, it's a cherry blossom design. So I'm going to start to do the trees first, um, carving right into the clay. And as you can see, it's pretty dry, so I'm not getting a whole lot of color residue. Um, but I also try to do one carving stroke at a time, otherwise you can get the colors in the carving and you don't get as crisp of a line. I suggest doing this on your wheel or a banding wheel of some sort so you can turn it around without causing any smudging or blurring. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done another tree on the opposite side and now I'm going to add the tree blossoms. I usually just do a little flicks about four or five, occasionally one or two, just around, like little petals floating. Once you have your desired number of cherry blossoms, I go back in with my very tiny little brush. Um, yeah, the 20 zero. And the pink over here. The pink. And then I just fill in those little itty bitty flower carvings with the pink and my tiny brush. I usually leave the tree stems and branches the raw clay. Thanks for watching my video and if you have the time don't forget to subscribe hit that little red button over there and the bell so you get notified whenever I have another video coming out and I promise I'll be having more videos um, more frequently um, and you know like the video so I know if you want more content like this um, and yeah thank you for watching oh and remember uh, never forget to make messes make mistakes and enjoy that process bye